Hello and welcome to the Paranormal Taurus. I am your host, Tom Jordan, and I am joined today by Danny McGellan. Hello. Uh, it didn't lead you into your hello there. I'm not falling <laughs> for that trap again. Um, and paranormal expert Ross Andrews. How jolly decent to see you today. Now, you will notice that there is somebody missing from the roll call today. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Sam Bean, also known as the Ghost Gimp, is absent. And that is because no. we have sent him out. This sounds, this sounds terribly, terribly professional. We've sent him out on assignment, which essentially means that we are putting him through some kind of horrendous ordeal for the, uh, let's say, the scientific advancement slash amusement of all of you, of is all it, of you many, many listeners. Is this a euphemism we use for his sat-nav didn't know where the studio was? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he uh, is at the other end of the country, sat in, a, sat in a, 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 a service station McDonald's. <laughs> He's investigating McDonald's right now. Crying as into a, uh, a banana milkshake. Uh, but no, he you you will find out at some point in the not too distant future exactly where it is he is today and and what it was that he was up to so something exciting to look forward to <laughs> but we shall miss him we shall miss him in his in his in his gimpness gimpy a- <laughs> in his gimpy absence so it doesn't think this is audio they don't know why we call him the gimp you should see what he dresses in when he gets here <laughs> we, we probably won't post pictures of that on facebook <laughs> at least not on the family section um you can't see what else he gets up to as well. So that's <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm going to kick us off today. Now Thanks. I'm going to take a guess, Tom. <laughs> and I, I mean, think you may have done some research. I, I have, I have. I'm I'm glad you say that, Ross. I have done some extensive ah. research. Uh, you go to the library. Uh, I mean, I do go to the library. Online, was it an online research? I, I, I do go to the library online quite frequently, actually, largely because I've got an overdue book that I can't find uh, <laughs> and still have a fine for. And for some reason, the library aren't worried about me borrowing digital books, so I can still do that. I and mean, they're going to chase me now. The library are going to turn up, going to turn up, knocking at knocking at our door, going, "Ah, oh, we heard you on the That's Paranormal Tourist." <laughs> Um, but I have, you know, I've, I've searched through a, lo- a lot of different tomes this week and <laughs> gone back and forth uh, over a variety of different different published articles. I've looked online. I've I've watched some clips on YouTube. And you with know. all that research, and with all that research, whereabouts would you say most of your knowledge has come from this week? Well, I'm going to say that actually, happily, this week I I, I have come across a tome. Oh right, <laughs> that you may or may not have heard about. Uh, it's it's. It's available, just about. It's been out of print for some time, so it's it's kind of All right. it's the sort of thing that if you bought it on rare, on on eBay, it would say rare. Ah, Antiquarian capital. booksellers. Let's see. Yeah, absolutely. Is it a first edition? What? That was me pausing just for a quick photo. In this week's episode there. of Book Club. This is the same <laughs> as every week's episode. So, of Book Club. so the other the other thing that you were this year's book that I'm reading. Um, <laughs> The other thing that you'll you'll start to recognise about the stuff I talk about is generally speaking, what I'm discussing is something that just freaks me out a bit. Or probably as a kid freaked me out a lot and kept me awake. Uh, and, and at night, in the day is fine. <laughs> this particular instance, what we're talking about, is an occurrence from 1971. Oh! Ancient history. Well, all that time Before ago. Before I was born. In the last century. In, wow. In the last millennium. Millennia. Ah. So 1971, in southern Spain, an old Spanish woman, appropriately. Very wor- old now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't comment on, on, on what her possible condition might be at this point. But, I mean, uh, she's probably dead. Thanks, Danny. <laughs> so uh, she might be a ghost herself by now. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? So she was, she was working in her kitchen. Uh, and she was startled by a shout from her granddaughter. The woman turned round to see what the trouble was and froze in horror. Staring up at her from the pink floor tiles was a face. On the floor? On the floor, floor. yeah, not her granddaughter. It's not very very clear that is is written out largely. But essentially, there was a face staring up at her from the tile. I see. Okay, Um, and she tried, she tried... (laughs) I'm not sure this would be my would be my instinct. She tried to to rub the face away with a rag. Well, wow. she do. Uh, yeah, she as do. you do if there's a face. Yeah. I don't know what it what it doesn't define is the clarity of the face. I don't know is this like a there was some water on the face and it on, on the floor and it was kind of in a sh- 
shape of a face and that freaked her out? Or was there a full-blown uh, mirror We're like... We're talking a Hannibal Lecter has carved off a face and just and just laid it, thrown on, the it on the floor. Uh, or was it like the equivalent of looking into a mirror and seeing somebody else looking back? So what are you saying? There was a highly polished floor. There was a highly <laughs> polished floor. <laughs> and saw, oh my and God, she it looks just like me. Um, so and es- and essentially, what she went through a process. Some of this I find a little bit hard to believe, admittedly. So she she called the landlord to the house to have a look, and and that's uh, that maybe uh, is something you might expect. And he he took up the floor tiles and put down a new concrete floor, and that seemed to solve the problem. But then later on, so a few weeks later, another face appeared on the floor, um, and then and then local authorities were alerted, and it decided they decided to dig up the entire kitchen. I mean, I just maybe may, maybe the local authorities were more responsive in southern Spain in 1971. Certainly better Quiet than the, months, <laughs> the British but ones I, are. I feel like where we are right now uh, in the UK, the local authorities. I mean, she. I, I feel like there could have been a, a Hannibal Lecter type face laid out on the floor, and the local authorities might have gone. Ah. Yeah. It'll probably disappear. It's not our jurisdiction. Uh, but certainly, a phone call to say. Uh, I know this sounds a bit weird, but a ghostly face has appeared on the floor. Could you come and check it out? This is actually quite a famous story. Is it? Unfortunately, it it is pre-digital cameras and all. Um, But uh, there is uh, quite a collection of stories of... It's quite often blood stains rather than faces sure. that appear on murder spots and they'll get rid of the floorboards and put new ones down and then the blood stains appear again. Um, so it, it does have a, a bit of a precedent to it. Okay. I mean, in this instance, what they dis- apparently discovered after after digging for uh, for not too long uh, <laughs> was that the, the house had been built on the site of a medieval monastery, that old classic. And, um, and they used to put faces on the floor. And they used to put faces on the floor. <laughs> it's a well-known fact, that one. Uh, and, um, and, and so it was, the, it was theoretically, it was the faces of, of monks looking up from the floor, maybe trapped, trapped beneath the floor. And uh, and a team of ghost hunters apparently installed sound equipment, which picked up the sounds of unearthly moaning and groaning. But uh, before a proper investigation could be undertaken, the sounds and faces stopped just as suddenly... Does it say what the difference between earthly moaning and groaning and unearthly moaning and groaning Mm. is? It doesn't specify. It doesn't specify. But then that said, it all stopped conveniently before any of the proper investigations had started which yeah. now call me call me a skeptic call me cynical but that j- it just sounds well, a little well you say that most uh, paranormal activity seems to have a bit of a shelf life and when you're dealing with poltergeist activity and weird things like that they tend to last for about three months or so now okay. If they got the council involved, I'd be very <laughs> shocked if they turned up within three months to do three, anything. Three years later, <laughs> yeah. the old woman had died yeah. and uh, her whole family had moved to America. Somebody turned up to, to with the initial form for you to have, <laughs> yeah, a, have yeah, a peruse exactly. and fill in. Um, I mean, this this is I this is the sort exactly the sort of thing that freaked me out a lot uh, as as a child and still freaks me out a little bit. Now, not anywhere near as much as. So what we need to do is start and, leaving and, masks and kind on of, your floor and just see the reaction. If you, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds like the sort of thing mm-hmm. I would do to other people, but um, but it doesn't. You know, none of it terrifies me half as much as as real potentially dangerous people who might be out there doing scary things in the world. But um, but the prospect of being in uh, an, an empty house and minding my own business and seeing a face actually for me, I think like a lot of people, a face at the window. I'm a, I'm a real make sure the curtains are completely are crossed over so there's no potential gaps. I find the face at the window is particularly scary if you live like on the third floor. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it's pretty scary if you live on the ground floor. I mean that's I'm not sure which one is more is is more terrifying. But um <laughs> but it, I mean I do, I do recall an instance at, at university where we'd taken a photo of somebody next to a window in one of our um one of our halls flats and uh, possibly Early days of that sort of thing, you know, really pre a lot of a lot of it kind of going around on the internet. We we possibly photoshopped in a sort of faint, ghoulish <laughs> face, which we thought was very funny because there's actually a friend of ours on uh, from a picture of him on a night out. But uh, we photoshopped his face in and then posted a couple of things uh, on on paper, not on the internet. Well, the, things on unfortunate paper thing now we photoshop. It. 
is that whatever evidence anyone gets, immediately everyone just says Photoshop. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. And, and and people have got some some. Sam Bean's not here, so I'm going to go a bit urban for a second. Some mad skills yeah. <laughs> um, on Photoshop, so it, which makes it more difficult, doesn't it? Because yeah. people, I mean, you know, if, if you were to show, you know, we appraised this photo that we'd made and you could see if you were really canny, you could see for a start there was no reflection yeah. in, in, in the part of the window where there absolutely should have been. That said, uh, and I've come across this a couple of times, people who, who have a phobia of ghosts and the paranormal, yeah. there, there was, unbeknownst to us at the time, not that I'm suggesting it would have halted our activities if we had known this, but there was a girl uh, who actually lived in my flat who then spent a week sleeping on somebody else's floor because she was so terrified by the prospect of... Or she's oh, desperately fancied the in. person who's yeah. hosting. Possibly. <laughs> possibly. Trying I was to say, that sounds like get a promoted from the floor. I mean, yeah. I mean <laughs> after a week, though, yeah. right, I'm sitting on the floor. I'm going home. <laughs> Forget this. That feels like less of a victory. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to take the sheer terror. But absolutely, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, it could, it could, could, could be. But, um, but yeah, faces turning up anywhere well, that you the, don't want. As I said, this pretty... has a bit of a precedent to it. With uh, There's quite a few stories. Uh, and coming at it from a tourist point of view, um, I, I'm not entirely sure if you can still access the place, but Little Dean Manor in the Forest of Dean had a ghost story attached to it where somebody was murdered and there was a blood stain on the floor. And every time they got rid of it, it would reappear in exactly the same place. And I think they even replaced the floorboards and so on, and it appeared again. Yeah. Um, wow. And it didn't matter how many times they cleared it away. Now, Little Dean Manor has changed hands several times, and sometimes it's available to be able to go into it and sometimes it's not depending on who owns it at the time but well worth you might be listening to this in 20 30 years time um look it up and see if you can get down there because it is a particularly haunted building with um fantastic stories attached to it which we will hopefully cover at some point when i find out whether you can get in <laughs> that would be very or cool. whether we find out whether we can get in yeah. <laughs> and get sam being on the case <laughs> Yeah, no. maybe they'll have faces peering in through there. <laughs> the sceptical side of us will say there's a thing, uh, the pareidolia effect, where you see what you expect to see. And the first thing your brain will try and interpret any shape is um, will be a face. Uh, it sees just a couple of dots and lines and things like that and goes, oh, that must be a face. Um, so we don't know because I've, I've heard of the story, but I've never seen any photographs. Uh, of the actual face it could have been two dots and a line you know yeah. and, and sure, look, sure. oh look it's mr happy on the floor someone has squidged mr happy <laughs> 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 uh, and so it's a very difficult one to comment on but there are a lot of them out there a lot of those stories that one is actually one of the most famous ones because it was a face rather than a blood stain or it was you know a name on a window that yes as well mm. it's quite i mean there's quite a few just having having a little scan for those sort of things there's quite a few of um people looking out the windows you know so there's there's a house and if you walk past that house at night yeah. commonly you know I th- i've got a feeling there's even i'm going to come on to one of those later i'm going to come on to one of those in one in uh my venue that i'm talking about later oh, fantastic on. oh well i won't speak any more than that but when i was about eight or nine i was looking after my friend Susanna's hamster bear with me <laughs> and... and the bear was with you. <laughs> And uh, that evening, I had watched, it was a Saturday night, and I had watched an episode of um, famous 90s um, programme, Strange But True, presented by my glass ball. Hang on, this is, get, right, when Tom does research, it's his one book. Whenever <laughs> you talk about research, this might not be on, ca- oh, on camera, on microphone that often, but whenever she talks about research, it's always an episode of Strange, <laughs> Strange But, but True. Strange But True somewhere. Um, but yeah, I was watching one of those and I actually, w- there, there is a genuine prize available for anyone who can find the episode that I'm referring to. But it, I remember it being the scariest one I'd seen. I mean, like a big prize? or uh... He's not interested in the actual <laughs> story. Our, our He's interested in the prize. prize Hopping on YouTube here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I have. I've extensively uh, rewatched them for research. Um, but I, I haven't found it yet. But I, I'm going to try because there's only so many episodes surely um unless my class ball still does them in his well just to get really round. exciting on for tom here they did bring out about three books that accompanied the series <gasps> so this is future research oh my goodness me <laughs> that's that's next year's uh christmas next year's book combined <laughs> obsessions um anyway in this particular episode uh there was a lady in a hotel room and i can't remember the details very well but she sees like a light through her window on the other side of the hotel or something and then she hears some noises anyway they go to the door 
open the door and there's this woman's face kind of either crying or screaming or shouting or something but there's this woman kind of ghostly woman in the doorway and this absolutely petrified me now the whole fit my myself my mom my dad we all went to bed and then i remembered that i was looking after this Bear. hamster, hamster. <laughs> um this hamster and my mum made me go downstairs and said i needed to chop up carrots or something for it to put in its cage um and so i went downstairs by myself and I was in the kitchen. I turned the kitchen light on. And in our old house, um, so the kitchen faced the garden. There's a window facing the garden. So you can see said garden. But with the light on, obviously, you can only see your sort of your own reflection and really vague things outside. <laughs> so I was I was doing this and I was kind of freaking myself out. And I was like, don't look up at the window. Don't look up at the window. There wasn't a curtain over the kitchen window. I couldn't cover it. I couldn't cut the stuff with the lights off because that's dangerous. Um, anyway, I looked up and in the, behind me was the door of the kitchen and I could really clearly see this floating head of a woman with sort of curly hair. And I, I was absolutely, I screamed, I dropped the knife or dropped the carrot. I almost passed out until I realized that it was my mum who had come downstairs <laughs> to make sure I was okay. But in her infinite wisdom, didn't put any clothes on. So she'd got changed and was naked ready for bedtime <laughs> come crept downstairs and thought oh I best not scare her so I'll just poke my head round the corner and she's not very tall but tall enough that her head isn't on the ground so the reflection just looked so much like a floating head and I absolutely I couldn't sleep for hours Sorry, for one moment I thought you said and your mum naked went into the garden <laughs> went into the see. garden to wave at me <laughs> yeah poked her head round so it looked like it was coming from the garden but oh I've never been so frightened and and in her maternal in her maternal care she burst into tears of laughter um and my dad came down and sort of reprimanded her for scaring me meanwhile I was still shaking I can't remember clearly if I uh, cried or, or wet myself or whatever yeah <laughs> I don't even know if the hamster survived is, the, is the hamster still alive that's what oh, I need to know I mean, that's what I need to know unfortunately the the hamster's definitely not alive anymore I would like to point out in, when sure? we when you tell us stories they often involve an animal that is dead yeah <laughs> I know <laughs> much to Sam Bean's delight oh, yeah. um, um, but yes, yeah, so I had, I had, um, yeah, that was, that was terrifying, but that was my experience. But I, I so clearly still see it as a face because I, it didn't look like my mum. I thought, well, I mean, she has curly hair and she's about that height, but. <laughs> and walks around naked. And walks around naked. <laughs> All the time. She has, luckily she has curtailed that. Now I'm, now I'm an adult. <laughs> she, she stops coming around. She doesn't come around naked quite as often. Um, which we're all very thankful for. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was that was terrifying. But, but I, um... obviously, on the tourist point of view, if you want to see your mother naked, come... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come round. Um, if you have a hamster, we can uh, we can feed it. Does Susan know that you killed her hamster? Um, it was Susanna, but Susanna. Uh, I didn't kill her hamster. But the hamster did die. But shortly the bear afterwards. did. <laughs> so yeah, the, the bear, bear sadly did. didn't the bear. survive the night the bear ate the hamster um but, but yeah if anyone could find hamster. that episode of strange but true that that, that, well, that your mum's naked that, that, <laughs> that my mum then the chose to strip for strange but true featuring your mum naked <laughs> as a bear eats a hamster <laughs> yes there is a massive prize for anyone who i can feel find we've that got episode. this week's title sorted <laughs> <laughs> i uh, i think i've possibly got a clue as to why you can't find it yeah <laughs> Um, although that actually wasn't what I was going to talk about, but I just thought it linked <laughs> I'm <surprised>. quite nicely. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I started this episode not knowing I was going to bring up my naked mother. And uh, I mean, I'm most episodes that... start like that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's that's the sort of. So, what exactly were you planning on talking about? Well, do you tell enough, us, dear Danny? This is the subtle it, link. <laughs> yeah, it, it does link somewhat <laughs> to what we were talking about does about it? fakes being so much easier now so i was fakes. going fakes yeah, and so... that link is fake is one letter away from face it's <laughs> <laughs> very natural yeah that was seamless that that was... So you talking about and photoshop going to talk about fate after that. <laughs> yeah. um you talking about photoshop and doing putting the face in with your friend i did a similar thing with housemates um which t says something about the people we are really um but we set it up so my the webcam on my computer was running 
and my housemate Duncan was sitting on the sofa. Um, I think you've seen this video as well. It is, it is available to see on YouTube. It's terrible. Um, and I, I'm in the background and do my best acting. Um, and he's like, oh, are we, we going to record this thing or not? And we act as if we're about to record a birthday thing for one of our other housemates. And we just happen to have left the camera running. And our other friend Claire is just out of shot laughing <laughs> she didn't trust herself to be on camera <laughs> and we had a piece of thread attached to a mug on the table so I was apparently upstairs but in fact just outside the room and in the meantime our other housemate <laughs> was outside the window um the lounge window and so I pulled on the mug so it kind of jerked across the table and like no one really noticed it obviously and then our housemate Dave had uh like he ha we'd kind of covered him so it was just his face he was quite pale so it worked quite well <laughs> and he just then pushed up against towards the window so that his face would appear and then went back again so it would go black and it was pitch black outside it was night time and we posted it as like a oh have a look at this video really weird but i think the mug moves and our plan was focus on the mug yeah. And be like, oh, the mug's moved. And then hopefully someone will comment and be like, oh, there's a face at the window and it would become a phenomenon. I mean, I mean, when our other two housemates, other three housemates came home, um, they were like, well, I mean, that's Dave. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we were like, no, no, he was out. He was out. And they just they just didn't buy it. I mean, it was a disaster. And it's got I think it's got like three views. Um, and I mean, <laughs> there were three of us in it. So that accounts for those. Uh, there may be a couple more now because I've shown a couple. I, of I mean, I've seen it. So if it's three views and somebody somebody was in it, hasn't even watched, <laughs> watching it. So. Um, so yeah, it was it wasn't very successful. But we we had we had the desire, but not necessarily the uh, creative skills to be photoshopping things in but it did um i love uh paranormal films um but you go back and watch some of the really old classics and they are you know the effects are terrible but terrifying at the time you know in if you, well, were... if you go way way back one of the first films ever was a train um a black and white film of a train sort of just going along the track as though it was heading towards the, the screen and people ran out of the cinema screaming their heads off thinking there was a real train about to run them over. Really? And if you think this was wow. black and white, low res images yeah. and yet they, their brain they still, still went, yeah. this is this is scary. So it's amazing how, um, and I, I wonder the kind of <clears throat> technology versus what we know, or well, the science snake, if you will. Um, <laughs> so has the, reared its ugly <laughs> head again. Has reared its head. Um, <laughs> so in films like the Paranormal Activity series, which, again, me and my housemates, well, my, my two friends, Duncan and Claire, the, the trio of us were just absolutely obsessed with. Duncan and I would wear wear something kind of it, hold something in front of our face when we went to the cinema to watch it we weren't actually as brave as we wanted to be um and we used to have uh, i remember a few years ago we had a night where we watched all of the scream films when the fourth film came out because that was a big t that was a that was a big day well, the, the um, biggest problem i think you have with the uh, certainly paranormal activity films is the they differ from reality in one massive way in a paranormal case you'll get about three months of activity and it fades away in a mm. film, it has to have an ending. So it gets yeah. worse and worse and worse and worse. Big finale and then finish, then 30 seconds and then <laughs> you get the cliffhanger that looks like they want to get a sequel out of it. Yeah. But in real life, you'll get some big event and then it will sort of just some more events that taper away and taper until eventually it disappears. Out. Yeah. And so, I mean, paranormal activity certainly, um, spoiler alert here, <laughs> I think it finishes with... Uh, the first one also being dragged off some by something or something like that, isn't it? I can't yeah, really the main the, versions of yeah. it. Yeah, oh, well, there's, oh, right. I think there's three different endings. I think it might be oh. now. I, and actually, I feel quite lucky in having seen the original ending where I'm trying to remember, remember what does what does happen. Is but it when they, the police come in? Yeah, I think I think the police come in. So she's she's yeah, ends up massive, killing her massively husband, spoiler, no, and she's Hello. sat and she sits basically. The video sees her sitting all night, basically just rocking, rocking back, back and forth. Yeah. yeah. And then the police come in and I think they shoot her. I think she goes mad and she sort of runs at them and they she shoot her. She runs at them and they shoot, yeah. Um, but of course, that's not very sequel friendly. So what they did mm. is they CGI'd the the kind of official release. Uh, and you see you, you, you see her kind of launch at the camera in, ob she, in well, obvious... Well, there's silence for a while, isn't there? Because she goes downstairs and kills her husband. Then there's sort of a... 
there's 30, like you say, 30 seconds of kind of nothing. Then her naked mother. Then her naked, then her naked mother. Her naked mother with a bear. <laughs> kind of hamster. wielding a hamster. <laughs> then she comes up the stairs and you start to see her coming up the stairs and then she suddenly launches at the camera yeah. right at the end. And it's, it's the only moment of CGI in the film and it obviously leaves it open. Yeah. But it's it's nowhere near as it. I mean, it, it appeals to the kind of jump scare type crowd, but it's nowhere near as subtle an yeah. ending as the original. It's interesting as well because I almost think technology seems to have ruined it for us. So, in some ways, I've I've noticed that the trend for quite a lot of horror films or paranormal films that are, uh, have been really popular in recent years go back. Um, to like the 80s or the 60s or, or, or whenever, to when you don't have um, phones and things. And we find that creepier. It's almost like actually the technology now has just made it so transparent or so um, difficult. Well, there to is believe. an argument that te- the technology itself is killing the ghosts. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, quite often haunted places, um, once they stick Wi-Fi in or they've got um, there's stories where you've had a particularly prevalent amount of ghosts that happen in this haunted house and then a phone tower goes up in the grounds and suddenly there's no more reports and there is a theory that somehow it's interfering oh, <laughs> with wow. the spook yeah. <laughs> or one's on ee and the other one's yeah. on talk talk or whatever enough data left yeah so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because the, the, definitely the uh, the trend is to you know there's that film um, I watched recently called Ouija. Um, yeah, there's two of them. There's a sequel. The, well. yeah, yeah, there's like a family who pretend to do Ouija boards, and then all of a sudden stuff happens. With well, their saying that, they, um, and a certain group quite famously did some um, Ouija board sessions and seances where they invented uh, a spirit, and so they were pretending to communicate with an actual spirit. Ah. And then poltergeist activity and things like that happened around it, and it would be attributed to, I think it was George, I think his name was the spirit they invented. And this George would then communicate with them and move things about and so on. So they kind of invented a ghost. So the theory being is that these people have not communicated with something, but they're somehow creating some psychic energy amongst themselves, which is interfering with the ether, as it oh, were. Oh, wow. I look forward to when we do a Ouija board. That's one of the investigations I'm most excited about, I think. Well, we will be doing a fair few at the Playhouse Theatre. Um, Indeed. At the Cheltenham Paranormal Festival, as the Paranormal Tourists are hosting the Saturday night uh, ghost hunt at the Playhouse Theatre, which is something like the September the 20-something, 2017 um, tickets available from www.paranormalfestival.com. Saturday the 23rd. 23rd. 23rd is and the Friday, Friday is already sold out. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, completely sold out. Wow. And it is actually, it's an exciting week where there's all sorts, if you're interested in the paranormal, all there is kinds all sorts going on. Of... And you can come down, you can meet your favourite paranormal your favorite tourist. Gimp. Yes. Um, yeah, you, Sat- can, you can shake hands with the ghost Saturday gimp. Saturday night is a good opportunity to see your regular host hiding inside a cupboard somewhere within <laughs> a spooky theatre. The place is creepy enough. So we've got to get you to come daytime. out of the closet on the Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't Could matter how many will, put, how many snacks you put out, I'm going to be. I here. think what everyone wants to know is: Will amazing spooks and mysteries be there? I actually think we should put on an hour long talk um, on of a PowerPoint presentation yeah. just of amazing spooks, or maybe <laughs> just, just Tom just, sat in an old armchair, just reading, reading it. it. <laughs> I, do you know? What? I I I am I am willing even to purchase another copy. Get the paranormal tourist to sign it and, <laughs> and, and create a competition whereby you can you can, you can win a win copy your own of a copy. book signed by people other than the author. <laughs> well, well, who I, knows? Maybe we can get in touch with Peter Eldon and, and get him to sign it. Yeah, and if he's not alive anymore, maybe, maybe we can still we can. get in maybe touch. Maybe we can still get in touch. <laughs> and maybe, maybe if we find that episode of Strange but True, we can. Put it on the uh, the back wall. The Playhouse has cinema capabilities, doesn't it? Maybe it does. we could play that. Well, I, I'm going to try and force a link in here. Um, Do it because we were talking about strange floaty lady heads. <laughs> uh, but as we've just mentioned, the Playhouse that has a woman in white that is seen um, on the balcony. I'm going to talk about a woman in black and a woman in red. Oh, and link back to a previous story about a woman at a window so many links Ooh. all i've got to do now so is make many. it rhyme with lake cake or something like that and <laughs> fate, we've done fate, this, fate face yes is there one letter we can change in in the word fake or face to make it, make it is it factual 
It is. What do you mean? Am I just sit and make it up? Or so we could change or face or, or to or fade. No. Fact. You do realise now when I'm telling to everybody who's listening to this, um, I'm going to be sat here telling you all of these stories, and I know full well that Tom and Danny are going to be sat there, not listening to a word I'm saying, and just sitting there trying (laughs) to do anagrams for the next ten minutes. What word can be changed? Or or watching episodes of Strange but True? Yes, (laughs) downloading things or reading Amazing Speaks of Mysteries by Peter Eldon, originally printed by Bath Press in Great Britain. Well, I'm going to talk about Dover. Lovely. Yeah. And Dover Castle. Uh, if any, I don't know if any of you have been to Dover Castle. It's a fantastic building. Uh, there's been castles there for roughly about a thousand years. Um, and there are some amazing parts of Dover Castle you can go to. It's not a cheap venue, but there is a way of doing it cheaply, particularly um, as the ghosts appear in the daytime. So you might want to go there as many times as you can. You can become a member of, I think it's English Heritage or National Trust. It's one of the two. Oh, fingers crossed it's and National Trust. If you go twice, you would have already... And, uh, it would have cost you more than if you bought a year's membership thing, which allows mm. you to go as many times as you want. So I advise you to do that because there's also a lot of other haunted places around there which you'll get into for free uh, by being a member of National Trust or English Heritage. Um, there's quite a few places around there. But Dover Castle. English Heritage. Um, English. English Heritage, yes. Right. <laughs> um, uh, it's It was used a lot during World War Two. And one of the ghosts there is not a lady in red or lady in black, but I'll come to them in a moment. Uh, but it is another lady. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, ladies in the castle. Um, when you go underneath the castle, there's lots and lots of tunnels dug out there that were used during the war. And they have sort of redeveloped it and so on to be a museum. Uh, so there's a lot of sound effects and weird stuff and projections going on. So you have to be very wary from a ghost hunter's point of view. But it's the non-ghost hunters who have reported seeing... Um, complimenting, in fact, to the guide and saying, yes, the lady reenactor you had in the operations room, the detail of the costuming and what she was doing and all this is fantastic. Um, and the guide says, well, there's nobody in there. There was just us. I was just telling you about it. And then we came out again. Um, and loads and loads of people have reported seeing uh, these people in World War Two clothes, like they assume actors pretending to be doing some kind of weird operation stuff uh, and then they just walk away again and people say no it's quite impressive that you're spending a fortune on all these actors and all they're doing is just standing in the background <laughs> pretending to do stuff but so many people have reported it it also makes you think well how many people saw it and didn't report it because they just mm. naturally assumed because no one said oh i saw a ghost they're always saying i saw those people mm. in, in that room so that's underneath the castle now, if you go back up onto the top, you've got Peveril's Tower. So we're going back to sort of Battle of Hastings time uh, when they started building the first decent castles and so on at Dover. And the man who um, commissioned and was was told to start building it wasn't particularly pleasant and, in fact, was the instigator or the cause of Britain's first industrial action strike uh, where the builders went, right, we're not working here, down tools, one out, all out. Uh, at which point he threw them in the dungeon. So that was how they dealt with it then. <laughs> so quite likely what they're going to be doing in our country very soon if anyone goes on strike again. <laughs> so he threw them all in the dungeon and the new team he got in and he was saying, right, how do we get around this? This is ridiculous. Um, because a mason had fallen off the scaffolding and died, which is part of what led to the strikes because they were blaming it on the conditions and so on, saying, yeah, improper scaffolding here gov we need to go on strike uh so this new team comes in and he says right what are we going to do here and the new team suggests as you do what we need is a sacrifice (laughs) (laughs) now this sounds kind of weird to us now but quite often they would kill an animal and put it in the brickwork of the walls particularly in castles and so on and it was a good luck type thing. It was obviously not for the animal. Um, but, uh, there's a lot of castles, for example, have cats and dogs and things like that in the walls. Or a hamster. Or hamsters and bears. <laughs> and, um, but they said, right, okay. And as the story goes, which I'm sure this is just a story, said, suddenly some old lady wanders past with walking her dog. And they went, yeah, that'll do. We'll have them. Uh, so they said, you, old lady, give us your dog. We are about to brick it up inside the walls. And the old lady says, get off. You're not having my dog. And they say, well, if you don't give us a dog, you're going in the walls with it. And big sort of fighting shoes. And they goes, right, brick her up. 
So she's in the wall with the dog. And uh, apparently the dog, according to reports, lived for quite a while, they think, by eating the old lady inside this wall. Um, And she is the lady in black that is seen. And she wanders around looking for the dog. And also the sound of the dog has been heard inside the walls. Now, these are seen during the daytime, so you can actually experience that one. Um, But there is another lady, not a lady in black, but a lady in red, which is seen looking out of a window, linking back to your previous stories. Uh, Mostly in the office's mess building. Um, But she's also been seen falling or floating from the uh, east corner of the Great Hall and then floating down to the floor. And um, this is also links to probably the same woman, because there's uh, quite famous stories that go on about these sightings. And the most famous one, I think it was around about 1890 to 1900, I can't remember the exact year, where uh, they were in the officer's mess, and a woman, by all accounts, an attractive woman comes running in, and this is in the middle of winter, and says, there's a fire, there's a fire in the room next door. And so they get up and they all go out and there is, there's a fire. And they go, oh my God, right, okay. And they put the fire out and she's very insistent and distressed saying, we must check every single part of the castle and so on. So they go around just going, yep, there's, there's no more. Everything's been put out, love. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Calm down, sit down. Uh, at which point she goes, oh, okay. Uh, I'm sure she didn't say it, okay. <laughs> she goes, oh, fine. Now, everything's lovely. dandy and lovely. Uh, got up and went to walk out and just disappeared. Uh, the next night similar thing happened she comes running up to a bunch of people and says oh my god oh my god you've got to quick 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 come back to the the mess and so on um at which point they realized because this is outside and there was snow everywhere she'd left no footprints Uh, and when they went back and checked the building it was a roaring blaze and it was all on fire again um and so she's sort of supposedly seen there to warn of things that were going wrong with the building but as i said there were no footprints in the snow now she is seen if you're there if you sort of head towards what was the officer's mess buildings she's often seen looking out of windows and a similar thing people obviously didn't necessarily report it uh and uh, until they found out there were missing floors. So she was stood on a floor that wasn't there looking out of a window. Mm. And it's only when people realise that there's no floor there for her to be looking out of that they actually went, oh, hang on. <laughs> How can there be somebody stood there? So that's a lady in red, and we can't afford the rights to play the music, so you won't hear that. <laughs> uh, a woman in black and a barking dog uh, and a woman dressed in World War Two outfits uh under the castle there's many other ghost stories related to the place that are sort of one-offs and so on but they're the really famous ones that you'll probably get them to talk about Um, and i've spoken to security people at the castle because they're always the best ones because they're the ones who are going to be there when they know there's nobody in the castle that's their job Mm. (laughs) you know their job is to wander around make sure there's nobody but them there and um i spoke to one guy who actually had seen the woman in red, um, and several of them would also experience weird banging noises on doors and slamming of doors, especially in the sort of tunnel areas. Mm. Uh, absolutely brilliant venue, phenomenal place. Uh, it is right on the top of a hill with lots of stairs and things like that, so it's not amazingly disabled friendly. If you go into the tunnels, if you can't walk the whatever it is, something like 70 or 80 steps to get back out again, there is a lift, so don't panic on that front. So obviously I took the lift. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that one, fantastic place. Um, so if you're near Dover, there's very el- little else to do in, do- in Dover. It's not a particularly pleasant <laughs> town. Uh, but the castle is absolutely amazing. And we've just double-checked in his English heritage. English heritage, right. And that um, most English heritage buildings will have a ghost story attached to them. And if you look at... If, if you're putting aside a year or two to go investigating... <laughs> get yourself a membership to that or National Trust or whatever, depending, because one, if you're on the East Coast, I think English Heritage has a lot of properties, but not much in the sort of Gloucestershire, South Wales area. Um, and so one has more in mm. each area. So so look it up before you join one to find out what's your best. There are some, there are some great places mm. you can go and visit. I mean, even if you're just interested in going and seeing yeah. some, mm. some old places, but I mean, I, I think quite a lot of them do have things associated with them. Yeah. Um, kind of where we are, Gloucestershire kind of area and outward a little bit you know this Snows Hill Manor and Chedworth Roman Villa and 
Um, Goodrich Castle is not very far and away. And a lot of these places are very expensive if you're not a member. Yes. It's, it's yeah. often worth, but we for found. A, I think for a year, I mean, ours, um, I have a family one which covers myself, my husband, two children, and that is less than £100 for the year. Um, which I mean, it works out. You've like only that. got to go to two venues, and you've to make yeah, it. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. For, the, for the cost of the cost of entry on a one-off per person is. You may as well is, get the membership. Uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Good. <laughs> this uh, find ghosts and support National Trust support and English Heritage. Heritage yeah. Um, okay, so that's it from us this week. Without the ghost gimp. Uh, so what have we got? We've got Dover Castle. You can go there. Dover Castle. You can, you go can and check. visit Danny's naked mother. Yeah. You can visit Danny's naked can mother. Do appear- appearances, maybe at the Paranormal Festival. You can we'll come see what we can arrange. Absolutely to the Paranormal Festival, Cheltenham Paranormal Festival, which is happening this year, 2017, and is taking place at the phenomenally spooky. Slash I'm actually going to plug somebody else's Playhouse television show here. Wow. Okay. Here uh, we go. Just suddenly reminded me. Um, Ghost Chasers. And I know you can watch it online, because I have. There is an episode, I can't remember which episode it is, I think it's something like four or five or something, that is in Cheltenham. And it talks about Presbury, and uh, as a pub in Presbury that's very, very haunted, uh, called The Plough, that we all know here. Um, And it goes on about the Playhouse. And at the Playhouse, we are sat there doing a table tipping experiment, and you can see the table moving around and all this kind of stuff. They've got quite some amazing stuff happen there. So watch that if you want to have some spoilers. Um, if you don't want spoilers, don't watch that before you come to the Playhouse Theatre. Uh, but to whet your appetite slightly, it might be worth watching. Are we doing some Pressbury stuff with the We will be. We'll be doing some, yeah, we'll be doing some yeah. ghost walks and things like that. Well, all well, the so. details will be on Facebook and Twitter. Um so we will we will be sure to Facebook post. and Twitter. Now pray tell what are our <laughs> the Facebook and, and, and Twitter links that we all need to go to. Well, I'm glad you asked. We're good at subtle links to this week, aren't we? <laughs> so you can follow us at at para tourists. Which is at para tourists on Twitter. Uh, there will soon be a um, Facebook page, Paranormal Tourists, and there may even, if I get time to do it, be an Instagram feed. Wow. I know, I know, wow. I know. That and a prize for. And Tom's keeping up with technology. He'll be doing etchings <laughs> and, uh, and holding them up Sending in the street for people. He'll be signals. doing a brass rubbing workshop. <laughs> Okay, so I think I think that gives us our, our bombshell to end on do, this week. Do, 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 do. Um, huge thanks for tuning in or downloading or streaming or brass rubbing, whatever it is that you've been doing to uh, to commune with us this week. Uh, thank you very, very, very much for listening. It is goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from them. <laughs> thanks a lot. Take care. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.